Blow update. I'm gonna go over a couple things I've done on blow, show you how I did it. I triangulated the seat. I moved the seat back almost three inches and took the Pentagon shape of the frame and triangulated it. And I made a gas tank for blow. It's what I call a Chopzilla gas tank. I built a bike called Bobzilla in 2005. Uh, and this is an extended version of that. I used this on a bike I did called the Chronic. It was a throwback bike to what I was building in the 90s and early 2000s. Definitely got that look, got that stance. Exact same rake, stretch, stance as Misbehaving, my first biker build off bike. Follow along, I'll show you how I do this work. Because Harley Davidson Rigid Frames had a horseshoe oil tank that went under the seat, the frames had a pentagonal seat shape and most of the custom frames that you see, especially the aftermarket custom frames, had the same pentagonal shape, which doesn't really make any sense because if you're not using the horseshoe tank, you don't really need it. And what ends up happening is you have all this area in the front of the tank here that's really unusable area. It makes the seat really, really large. I really like to take the pentagonal area out and make a triangulated seat. There's a good look at Blue's triangulated seat and how the fender and the seat and the fuel tank flow into each other as you look at them from the top and from a three quarter angle. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut this plate out. I'm gonna cut these tubes and I'm gonna remove this bend in the seat so that this tube goes directly to the back of the frame. And when I'm doing that, I'm gonna move this weld back, this joint back so that it's back here probably about two or two and a half inches. And that's gonna make my backbone of my frame seem longer and allow me to put a longer tank on blow. Okay, I've got Blow's rigid frame solidly fixed in my frame table here. I've got all the engine mounts bolted down to my table, the rear axle, which is another critical point, clamped up in the frame table. And then I've got the neck clamp, so nothing can move. So when I cut these tubes, everything may try and spring or move a little bit, but the critical points, the engine mount, the rear axle, and the neck are gonna remain where they have to be. So cut and weld the frame back together, all three of these critical points should be exactly where they were when I started. This is why they're called choppers. All right, so I compromised those welds with that cutting disc. Now come in with an air chisel and just peel this plate off. Handle that. All right, I got this pretty much cleared out here. I'm gonna cut it here and either replace this piece of tubing or use what I have here, but I'm gonna cut this piece of tubing here now and pull this side off. All right, so I've got my, my left side rear leg disconnected from the backbone. I'm gonna either make a patch piece or fix that piece of tubing that I cut out and weld it in, I'll take a look. I'll do one side at a time, show you the difference from one side to the other, then do the other side and be ready to make a gas tank. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a new piece of tubing. This piece of tubing is gonna basically come up and meet the frame way back here, about two inches rearward from where the original connection point was. But I'm not just gonna weld this tubing here. I take a piece of one inch tubing. This is an inch and a quarter diameter tubing. So the 
the inner diameter of it is one inch. So I take a piece of one inch frame tubing and I'll hammer that in there. I'll use this smaller piece of tubing on the inside to help align and support the joint that I'm gonna make here with the welder. And then I'll go ahead and slip this piece of tubing on, cut it at an angle here to match the way I want it to go, weld it up, and then I'll do the other side. When you weld, you don't want just a, a straight gap like that. You want a V gap so that you can get your weld penetration all the way through the thickness of the tubing. So I'm gonna grind a V here and a V on this end of the steel frame tubing. And do that first so that when I put the slug in, I can just slip this tube on and weld. There's my internal slug that's gonna align and support my joint. Okay, so here's my piece of tubing cut. I cut a V back here also so that I have a V joint there. It just slips right over my slug like this. The way this frame was originally made, there was a bend right here. I've taken most of that out. There's a little bit of gap here on the straight edge, but not much. So I'm gonna mimic that on the other side. But the way it was originally made, the, the tube came up like this. You know, it's probably about three eighths, a half inch higher. So I'm bringing it down a lot. It's gonna really change the lines of this bike. I know it's not a big change, but that little change is gonna make a huge difference. I'm gonna go ahead and tack weld this to start, and then I'll go ahead and cut the other side, tack it up. But once both are tacked together, I'm happy with it. I'll finish weld everything. I'm welding this frame at about 140 amps. In case you're wondering, that's, a, that's where I have the welder set. I'm not really that hot on the torch, on the pedal. But I have the welder set at 140, so if I need to get in and burn real deep, I can. But, you know, I'm probably welding at about 100, 110 amps right now. I can let this clamp go. All right, so there's how far back I've moved this joint from the rear legs to the backbone of the frame. It's two and three quarter inches, almost three full inches. I'll go ahead and clean all the rest of this up later, but you can see that three full inches makes a huge difference. And here's the difference in the shape of the seat. I mean, if you can't notice that, you're out of your mind, but you can see how the pentagonal side on the right creates so more seat surface area than on the left. And this really is gonna make this frame look a lot sleeker in the seat area and the way the seat flows into the gas tank because you're gonna get an hourglass shape. It's a lot more noticeable with the way I'm doing the seat than with the Pentagon. So there you can see from one side to the other what a difference it makes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this right side now and show you how this gets done. All right, so there's a triangulated seat all tacked up. I'm ready to finish weld it now. Patch this area of the backbone. I'll fix all that, all the area in front of it. It needs to be cleaned up. I'll clean all that up. But I just wanted to show you how I take this frame and transform it and really give myself the ability to make a longer gas tank, make the bike look sleeker, make it look longer than it is without actually having to extend it. Um, this is an old trick I've been doing for a lot of years. I hope you give it a try on your next custom. All right, this beautiful piece of aluminum is going to become my fuel tank for blow. I'm going to cut it out by hand, bend it by hand, weld it all up, and show you how I take a plain piece of sheet metal and make a gorgeous, custom, one-of-a-kind gas tank out of it. All right, so I've, I've laid out the bottom of my gas tank. This is my center line right down the middle. I'll show you that again in close-up later. This is a bend line. This is a bend line. This is going to be the tunnel of the transmission that goes over the center of the frame, and then these two pieces are going to be the bottom of my gas tank. I've made several tanks of this design before, so I'm going to freehand this one. I have templates from the tanks that I've made. I always save them. I can't find them. 
So instead of me searching out here for an hour or two trying to find out where I stored them, I'm just gonna go ahead and freehand this with a Sharpie. I'm gonna cut one side and then I'll make a template off of it, replicate it on the other side and show you how I put this tank together. This is a relatively easy tank to make because you don't have to do a lot of compound bends and English wheel work and, and planishing hammer work, you know, as far as shaping it. It's stuff that you can pretty much shape by hand and get a really nice tank out of. And I'll show you how it's done. So my table's gridded out. And there's a thing called the law of thirds that I'm going to use. And the law of thirds is a ratio of one to two is really appealing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of how I do that. So there's basically 13 squares here on the length of the, of the tank. So I'm gonna, you know, round, I'm gonna use four of them. One, two, three, four. The front part of my tank is gonna be the one third and the rear part is gonna be two thirds plus. Uh, we'll explore the law of two thirds in a little more in depth, but I'm just gonna draw an arc from my point here that I picked this one third of the length right here to the tunnel. And it's not perfect, it's not exact, but it just gives me a general idea. And I'll cut it when I come in with the bandsaw and get myself a nice cut there. Then I'm gonna do the same thing back here from the rear of the tank, from the bend line to that point. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit of width here because width gives me fuel volume. So, and down at the back where there's no, hardly any tank, the width is, there's not much volume, but as you move forward, it really, it really starts to give you a kind of volume. So there, I don't know if you can see that, how my shape goes. And this is the hourglass I was talking about with the seat. The seat's gonna angle out here where it meets the tank. So this is the hourglass shape that I was telling you about. This is what you get. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in the bandsaw. Make a template from this side to replicate to the other side. Cut the other side. I'll bend the tunnel and then we'll start making the top panels. Okay, so I got a piece of heavy paper here that I'm going to use for my template. And I'm just going to go ahead and clip it to this side that I've already cut. So I can make a template and copy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace my cut onto the paper. Then I'm just gonna cut along the inside of that line to give myself an accurate template to replicate my cut on the other side of the tank bottom. And I always save these templates. Like I said I couldn't find the ones I've already used before in the past. But I save them because if something ever happens to this bike it gets damaged, say a painter somehow loses the tank or something happens, God only knows, I can replicate it. So there's my template. It goes right up against the line there. It gives you a really good representation of the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this edge right here on the back because I do have it long. So then I just take the template, put it right on the other side of the tunnel. This really easily allows me to mirror my cut from one side to the other. Okay, now these dotted lines are my bend lines on my tunnel. So these two pieces are gonna be the bottom of the tank. This whole section here is gonna be the tunnel. So I'm gonna put the panel in my bending brake. I'm gonna bend 90 degrees at each bend line. All right, there's one side, and I'll go ahead and do the other. There you go.
you go. So I've been a little bit beyond 90 degrees, but there's a reason for that. I'll show you that in a minute. Now I'm ready to bend this center section, which is gonna be my fuel tank tunnel over a piece of pipe. But in order to do so, I'm gonna soften it with my torches. Because I'm gonna use just the acetylene from the torches. This is the oxygen acetylene torch. I'm gonna to use just acetylene from the torch to put a layer of carbon on top of the aluminum. Then I'm gonna carburize the flame, add some oxygen to it, make it a lot hotter. And the heat that it takes to burn the carbon off of the aluminum is gonna be that heat range I need to soften this aluminum so I can bend it easily. So take a note, watch how I do this. There's my acetylene. You see all that black soot coming off of there? I'm just gonna put that black soot as a carbon soot, I'm gonna put it right on my tunnel here. When I add the oxygen, it's called carburizing the flame. It makes it a lot hotter. Right. Okay, if you know me from Biker Build Off from 20 plus years ago, you see me do this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and bend this tunnel. And how I'm gonna do it is, I've got my center line marked with the Sharpie, right? So I'm just gonna keep that center line over this piece of pipe. This piece of pipe is bigger than the backbone of the frame I'm using, so it's gonna allow me to have some clearance. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend. I'm gonna get up here and follow my center line. I think you can see now you start to see the shape of my tank coming together. I got these ratcheting work clamps from Ironton at Norman Tool. I'm gonna use these now to help me pull this down. They got a mechanical advantage that even all my strength can't compete with. These clamps really help me muscle this tank into place because I'm pretty strong, man, and it's um it's taking all I got to to squeeze it down. I'll release these irons and clamps. You know? My general 
tank shape. I'll go ahead and flatten everything out and start working this tank. Okay, so here's a good look at Blow's chassis from above. You can see how I've triangulated the seat, taking all that mass out of it. And then you can see the tank tunnel and bottom that I've made out of that piece of aluminum. And you know, if you notice the, the mass of the tank is the first third of the tank and then the tail is the two thirds. That's the law of thirds I was telling you about. It has a really beautiful flow from the top and from the sides it'll do the same thing the way I make it, but you can see those lines, super hourglass lines, very feminine look. You know, that's what makes it sexy, is that feminine look where it's got some hips, which is right there in the seat, and it gets a little bulkier there at the top, which nobody minds too much. So, you know, take a look at that. You get a good idea from up above of how blow is gonna be laid out. This baby's gonna have some lines. Come on, let's get to the rest of it. So I got my tank tunnel and tank bottom clamped down to my table here and just to hold everything into shape and i cut out with my heavy paper uh pattern for the two front panels you know want to go like that want to go like this what i like about this heavy paper is you it pulls back to shape like a piece of metal will it springs back soft paper is going to give a lot and that really give you an accurate reading so something heavier like this definitely makes this process a lot easier but this piece won't be up like this it'll kind of curve in this is what i was saying it's a little bit of a bend on the edge a little bit of a bend here but not really a compound bend in the middle the the ed ends of the metal are going to give and the center of it's going to hold itself to shape which gives you a really nice profile and this is that bobzilla tank i've been making since the early 2000s Bobzilla is much shorter for a shorter frame, and I always call the Chopzilla. This is big, longer one I made. I used this tank on the bike I did called the Chronic. Uh, it was really the first time I used a Chopzilla tank. There's my template. I went to the bandsaw and cut out two pieces off of the template, and now I just got to bend these to shape and get them to fit and I'll tack them in. Okay, so if you remember me from Biker Build Off in the early 2000s, this is how I did this then, it's still how I do it now. You just, as I mentioned, this center panel, you're not gonna really do any compound bending to the middle of the panel, it's only gonna be to the edges. So I'm gonna start on this side here and basically I need to curve this bottom to match this curve. I'm just gonna bend it over my knee Real subtle, you know, and it bends real easy. You can feel it. It'll start to bend real easy on the edge. And then in the middle, as you push toward the middle, you can feel the give. But that center of the panel just doesn't want to give up, which is fine. Because I don't want it to. So I get a little bit of a curve there. Follow my, my profile here. And then the same on this edge. I want this edge to have some curve to it. So I don't even have to use my knee. I use my fingers and just start to put some bend into it. And what's gonna happen is as you put bend here, it's gonna try and straighten it out here. As you bend here, it's gonna try and straighten it out here. You have to keep working both against the other and eventually they'll give some, the metal will yield. But I start to get that panel look in here and then the same thing here on this edge. This edge has to curve and follow up over this tunnel. So it's gonna be harder because it's a shorter, a shorter bend and I've already curved these two now, so this one's not going to want to give. I'll push this against my table, and it'll give. Yeah, I know I've said this before, doing different things, but this is an art and not a science. This is something that trial and error is going to teach you. Uh, but what I'm teaching you is it can be done without having sophisticated equipment, expensive equipment. Uh, just really with the will and a little bit of a little bit of human strength. And this top seam, this is going to be your, your middle seam here. These, these two panels are going to diverge. You're not going to come together. And I'm going to put a filler neck on the top here. We'll take these front panels done. But I'm going to curve this, this one here too. Put some nice curve into it.
Now here's the other panel that I bent for the other side. So you kind of start to see when you, this one, I've got curved down. This panel I need to bring way down so that these two points are in the same spot. So and you see as I work it, it starts to get closer and closer to where it needs to be. I'm real close there now. Really, really close to having them where I want to be. I lay the panels together and I'll kind of compare their curvature. Uh, these are really symmetric. They're really, really close to each other. You know, I know I'm gonna put heat into them when I weld them. So I'm gonna use that heat to work to my advantage, but you can see starting to really get the makings of a tank coming together here. I'm gonna start doing some tack welding. I use some of that heat to help me shape this. And I'll get this tank together and I'll start cutting those rear panels. This is where these iron clamps really come in handy. I've got my panel clamped in where I want it. But this one last little section here, I need to hold tight so it doesn't pull when I weld it. And this little clamp will hold this piece tight for me so that when I weld, everything else doesn't pull away. So there's my panel fixed up to the tank and ready to weld. And you can see from the inside how good my gap is. You know, so I don't have any air gap there. I got everything held in real tight. The little iron tin clamps really helping me hold everything together. And I'm gonna go ahead and TIG weld this. And so there's those two front panels bent and tack welded onto the tank. I'll show you when I look from the front here, how symmetric it is. It's always gonna need a little bit of tweaking. All the heat from the welding is gonna move things around. I'll go back and trim this tunnel back later when I'm ready to finish weld this, but get a good look at that. You can see how this tank's really starting to come together. Here's a look from the rear. A little view from the top. I made my light cardboard heavy paper template for the side panels of the tank. Getting this template made is pretty difficult. Uh, you know, it takes quite a few cuts and trims to get it right because of, especially because of this curvature on the bottom here. But I've got it cut. I'm gonna go ahead and Lay it out in my aluminum, cut the aluminum on the bandsaw, bend those panels up and TIG weld them in. Then you really start to have the makings of this fuel tank. Okay, so here's my template panel that I made. And I cut out two panels. I marked them left and right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my technique that I showed you again. I'm gonna bend this over my knee get it to fit this tank. I'm gonna clamp it together and TIG weld it. It's a real quick, easy way to make a Chopzilla gas tank. I got my panel fit up here. I'm gonna tack weld it in a couple of spaces just to help it from trying to fly around all over on me when I fit it. Once I get a few speed pieces tack welded, I'll clamp it all together and finish all the welds up. This is the main body of my Chopzilla tank, all tacked together. I cleaned it up real good. Do a little walk around for you so you can kind of get a general idea of the shape. But the bottom is all tacked to the four side panels. And what I'm gonna do now is start to pull it all together with the irons and clamps and TIG weld it together. I'm just gonna tack it together because if I start welding, it's gonna really pull this aluminum contracts and expands so much when you weld it that it's really gonna pull. 
So I'll start tacking all these panels together. I'll pull those gaps down. You know, pull this gap down, this gap. I'll get it all symmetric. And then I'll go ahead and fabricate the filler neck and the top panels in the filler neck, which is really neat the way that goes on. Get it set up on the bike, show you how it's gonna look. Then I'll finish weld everything. We'll be ready to pressure test, put some fuel in it. My plan is to run this motorcycle before I have it painted. So I'll walk you through how I attack this together, how I pull these seams together. You know, it's a lot of fit and finish, but you see on the inside there, I have a really nice fit, fit, no gaps. So this is gonna weld up to be a really nice, really nice aluminum fuel tank. Here's the blow tank in its current state sitting on the bike. I'll show you what I'm thinking about doing with the front of it. So I always like to do kind of like an aircraft style in-flight filler neck. And what I've got here is a piece of aluminum pipe that I've cleaned up and it's pressed up into a, I believe it's a 1920s Packard radiator cap in the bronze wings, this beautiful cast piece. I used one of these on a bike I did called the Chronic in 2004, 2005. They're very hard to find because it's, you know, Great Depression era, expensive car stuff. So there wasn't a lot of that going on. So uh, right now I have it sitting on top of the handlebars. The handlebars are gonna ride a little lower. So it's roughly gonna be my angle right there. And I'll use that pipe. I'll actually use this pipe as my filler deck and make it part of the tank. But I use that to really kind of blend my panels between here and these front panels. And they give me a lot of extra fuel capacity and give me a really great look. And it kind of goes with everything I was saying where you have that forward aggressive leaning stance. This will curve up here and really finish the lines of this tank off nicely. So I'm gonna take it back to the welding table, mock all this stuff up, make sure I like it, get it back on the bike. We'll go back and forth a few times, but give you a really good idea of how this thing is gonna be. But those wings up above the handlebars are really like almost like a hood ornament and like a centerpiece. It the center of the cap is missing, has a flip up portion. I'll go ahead and make that and uh, make something really nice and custom for it. But this is gonna be a really nice touch to this bike. Kind of stuff I was doing in the 1990s and early 2000s for sure. Here's a look from the other side. That's hard to see right now. But once I get this all mocked up and take it outside where there's not a bunch of things in the background obstructing your view, you'll get a I get idea what I mean. Now the tank's clamped down on my welding table. I've got it centered. The table's gridded off in two inch square grid, so I have everything centered. I've got reference points, you know, to keep everything centered as I weld and mock it all up. So you see, I've got a nice, nice little layout here. This thing's gonna be super cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my elevation. Like I don't feel like I have that, that filler neck up high enough uh, right now. It's got the exact same angle as this, but I think I wanna crank it up a little more. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, I don't want, First of all, I'm not gonna leave it as long as it is, so don't think that I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cut it short, but I need it long right now just for me to lay everything out. You know, I can measure and visually see that everything is centered as I weld and mock everything up, and then I can go from here to the bike and back. Once I finally get everything the way I want it, we're gonna have us a beautiful tank. I made a template out of a manila folder. See how it's gonna bridge the filler neck to the front of the tank and what this does is really gives me that gives me a little bit of elevation to the front of the tank but at the same time gives me that forward leaning stance that I've been talking to you about so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to a couple pieces of aluminum cut it out bend those pieces up weld them to the tank now there's my panel pre-bend cut back the aluminum tube that I'm gonna use for my filler neck. And I took the Packard wings off of it for now. And I got everything kind of set up here, everything centered, I've got everything referenced going front to back. And I'm gonna go ahead and tack weld this filler neck in now. And tack weld these front panels to it just so everything starts to kind of stay stable. And then I can take it back over to the bike, make sure it's the way I like it. If it is, I'll finish it all up.
your ratcheting action lets you pull down against anything you're holding. It's almost like having a third hand. It's really convenient. The Chopzilla tank's nearing completion. I've got a few things to do. I'm gonna do a really neat thing I've done on a few tanks here in the past. I've got this area up top to finish and this area on the back to finish. So I'm gonna do opposing shapes. I'm gonna do a positive shape here and a negative shape here. It's kind of a neat touch. So I took a piece of aluminum, I bent it in my brake and trimmed it and made myself uh, kind of a little triangle shape. I'll, I'll go ahead and fit it tight in there before I weld it in, but you can see how that gives a real neat line. It kind of ties this whole thing in together real neat. I've done this on a couple of the Bobzilla tanks and Chopzilla tanks I did in the past. And then here I'm gonna do a negative V. So I bent another piece of aluminum, but I'm gonna, instead of mounting it like this, I'm gonna flip it over, mount it like this, so it'll have a negative shape here in the back. I've gotta trim it to match the, the way this tank wedges out, this little pie shape here. And you know, obviously I have to trim these two back pieces yet. But, so I'm gonna have those negative shapes which is really, it's subtle, but it's a nice touch, especially when it's all done and painted, it's gonna be beautiful. Now you can see that peak on the top of the tank there. And here's my negative relief that I'm working on in the back. I've cut this piece of aluminum out, bent it in my bending brake. I'm gonna lay it in here. I just need to pull this one panel in, this little iron tin, mini iron tin clamp. These things are so great. Um, especially the little ones, you know, I don't, I had never really seen clamps this small before. That'll pull my tank in symmetric, and then I lay this, then I lay this little spear in here. I'll tack weld that in, I'll trim the back off. I'll put a back panel on it, I'll finish the front up a little bit, and, and I'll have myself an aluminum Chopzilla fuel tank for a blow. The whole thing about blow is that this bike is really built in the style of the things I was doing in the 1990s, and which is really, I started in the late 80s, so in the 1990s, the things I was doing was what really kind of developed my style. And uh, so I'm trying to use as many parts as I can from the 1990s. And uh, you know, one of the things that I'm gonna do is, as much as I love an SNS carburetor, I'm going to take this Super G carburetor off. You know, Super G is a big version of the Super E because with this supercharger, you need all the gas you can get. So I'm going to take the Super G off and replace it with this big hunk of love. Carl's Speed Shop Typhoon carburetor. Now, <laughs> it's a huge, huge chunk of aluminum. The carburetor is, you know, normal size carburetor. It's, Actually, a copy of a SU carburetor, which is a British constant velocity carburetor. Uh, it runs and tunes just like a SU. A lot of people say they're very hard to tune, but mainly because most people don't know how to tune a SU. So I am going to put this bad boy on here. If that's not a big hunk of the 90s, I don't know what is. I started working on Blow and uploaded my first video on Blow three years ago. Uh, it's been over a year since I posted a video about Blow. I know you've been asking about it. So here you have it. And why is it called Blow? This beauty right here. And the fact that I grew up in Miami, Florida in the 70s, 80s, and 1990s.